perfect coordination. And there's a reason for all of it. The movement of any part of the body doesn't just happen. Every action we perform is governed by a vast network of nerves. How well our bodies function depends on how well this nervous system does its work. The B-24 Liberator has a similar network in its ignition and electrical systems. How well each part of the B-24 functions depends on how well the ignition and electrical system does its work. To make sure that it does work perfectly, it is inspected thoroughly after every 50 hours of flight. In the 50-hour inspection, the crew chief assigns his electrical specialists, Chandler and Moore, to take over. Training has taught them to work quickly and surely, with all senses alert to detect anything wrong. Let's see how they go about it. Four hammering engines vibrating relentlessly for 50 hours can easily loosen spark plug elbow terminals and shielding nuts. Moore tightens every one he finds loose. In tightening the elbow assembly, he makes certain that the spark plug barrel isn't loosened. If it is, it will affect the gap setting. Below, Chandler gives the ignition harness a careful once-over. He slides the wire back and forth through the rubber grommet to make sure it hasn't become frayed or worn. And he follows it to the cable that ends at the conduit elbow, which he checks for security of mounting. Security of mounting. That point can't be stressed too much. After inspecting all the wire in the harness, Chandler checks the magneto to be sure it's on tight and that the flange is firmly attached. Now he moves on to the switch lead and gives it a thorough examination. If it comes loose here, the engine will cut out. If it breaks, the engines can't be cut. So Chandler makes sure that it's on good and tight, all set for another 50 hours. In the meantime, Moore removes the cover from the booster coil and checks inside to make sure everything is ship shape there. OK. While he goes to replace the cover, Chandler signals for an operation test on the cowl flaps. Cowl flap switch closed. And the cowl flaps close smoothly, as they should. And they open just as smoothly. All in good order, so he gives the OK. Under the crew chief's eagle eye, Moore commences the electrical inspection by noting the operation of the battery disconnect relay. while the man in the cockpit cooperates at the battery switches. Finding everything in perfect order, Moore signals the cockpit and replaces the canvas covering. He now checks the battery installation for proper security of connections. He makes a hydrometer test of the electrolyte. If he finds the water to be low, he'll bring it up to the proper level by adding distilled water. Then, continuing with the inspection, he turns to the sump in front of the batteries. The sump is removed so that it may be thoroughly cleaned. The cleaning job is taken over by Chandler, who proceeds to give the sump its soda water bath to clean it and to neutralize acids. Moore's next job is to check all accessible electrical leads. He traces them down to see that they're properly anchored and supported. This one has sagged to a point where it's apt to rub on lines and cables and cause trouble. So he pulls the lead back into position to eliminate any possibility of danger. Now back outside to Chandler for a check on the landing light. A signal to the cockpit and down it comes. He watches to see that it extends properly all the way. No halfway measures here any more than in the rest of the 50 hour inspection. It should go on at the right time and if it doesn't, it's fixed on the spot. The switch is thrown to retract the light. And after checking to make certain that the light goes out again and then retracts to settle properly into its original position, Chandler once more gives the OK. In the cockpit, Moore throws the switch for the intercooler shutters, which are checked below for proper operation. They operate perfectly, so on to the next job, which is the all-important generator. The generator is the heart of the airplane's electrical system. It sends out the life-giving power through the great electric network of the airplane. Chandler first checks the generator for security of mounting. He makes sure, too, that the brushes are in good condition. They must not be excessively worn or sticking in any way, and their connection should be firm and tight. 
Chandler further checks to see that no faulty seal has allowed oil to seep into the generator. Just a little oil can do a lot of damage here. The cooling blast tube connection should be tight. This is it. He checks it and finds it okay.